Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the last in our series of uh, Digi International EMEA webinars, which we've been running this week. Uh, we've been covering all of our product groups, and this final session today will focus on Digi International's infrastructure management uh, port server device products. Um, next slide, please. As always, uh, please feel free to ask questions at any point during the webinar. You can either use the webinar question facility, which is located in the GoToWebinar menu, or you can email us directly at digi.webinars at digi.com, uh, and we will be answering all the questions that come through after the presentation during the Q&A session. So uh, please feel free as questions uh, occur to you to, uh, to ask them. Uh, presenters today are myself, Ron Singh, I'm the Director of Distribution Sales, uh, and Eng Gumasol, who is our Technical Pre-Sales Engineer located at our Munich office. Uh, again, just a few words on Digi. Digi International is a US-based IoT and solution provider. Uh, in Europe, we've got multiple sites and multiple staff around the uh, continent, and uh, our product offering falls into these three segments here. Um, Digi International's box product portfolio, which includes uh, a full range of cellular routers and gateways for enterprise, industrial, and transit applications, uh, and the products that we're going to be focusing on today, which will include our out-of-band console management products and solutions for USB over IP. Um, other products that the other portfolio that we have is on our OEM or embedded and RF product family, which includes our range of Connect Core system on modules and single board computers, uh, and also the Digi International XB range of footprint compatible RF modules for 2.4 gigahertz, sub gigahertz and cellular connectivity. Now Digi International's third offering in Europe is our software suites. Uh, we boast a plethora of software, software based platform and tools for development, deployment and management of multiple IoT hardware products. And spanning all of our products, is Digi International's Trust Fence. Uh, this is our proprietary uh, security framework uh, incorporating several aspects of security from uh, secure boot to anti tamper. Uh, Trust Fence is over the air upgradable uh, and assists many of our customers in, in removing the, you know, the barriers of having to develop and manage uh, IoT security measures themselves. As I mentioned, uh, we've been running these webinars all week, uh, covering all these product groups. This is the last one. All of these webinars will be um, posted on our website, so uh, you will be able to go back and either catch one that you've missed uh, or refer your colleagues to any of the others that have, have already happened, including this one. So at this point, I'm going to hand you over to Engin, uh, and who will give the presentation on Digi International's infrastructure management portfolio. Thank you, Engin. Uh, hi, Ron, good morning and welcome everyone. So as Ron said, today we will be focusing on today to the last piece of the puzzle. We've talked about the embedded offering already in our other webinars and we've talked about the LTE routers as well as the digital move manager and all the tools that uh, basically facilitate um, our products being uh, deployed within your system. The last piece of the puzzle will be today the infrastructure management. So I will start with an overview and uh, tell you what falls uh, under the name infrastructure management. As far as Digi is concerned, then I will be diving into USB servers, console servers, and then later on serial device servers. So let's just talk about what Digi's value proposition is. Here is a, um, a nice uh, drawing or, or a yeah, uh, a nice um, slide to show you some verticals uh, that we think that our infrastructure management products uh, fit really well into and some key market segments. Obviously, these are just examples and they are not limited to what we can offer in terms of um, connectivity to your uh, enterprise. Digi provides solutions for collecting, distributing and managing 
data across the enterprise. And the effective business needs to be able to gather data and communicate with the equipment across the enterprise. Um, it might be in tightly controlled production environments. It might be a customer facing retail or hospitality locations. Um, the programming and support teams need to be able to access and diagnose the behavior of um, these devices remotely. And all of the data has to obviously flow seamlessly in and out of the data centers. So. Um, in those environments, we have serial and USB servers as well as con console servers, as I said, um, present. And we will be talking about each of those uh, product groups and talk about the foundational values, advantages, as well as some use cases. So let's go into our prime family. Um, last year and this year, we have launched two new product families. These are Anywhere USB Plus and the Connect IT family for console management servers. These products are brand new products, um, replacing the, the legacy products and bringing in a lot of advantages. First of all, we, are, we have launched these products with the new operating system, DJ Accelerated Linux, Dell for short. And these products also come in uh, with some key benefits such as core module concept, uh, and this is quite new because our offerings in the digi, digi infrastructure management families, they didn't have any cellular options until now. So with these new products, we bring in a, a completely new strategy to the game. And these products can be also connected to your network using cellular or Wi-Fi options. So we will go into details uh, with those families, but let's just complete the picture here. We also have serial device servers or terminal servers and some direct connectivity options for um, USB and serial, even some serial cards. Um, these products are quite the legacy products. They have been there for a really long time in the DG's portfolio, but um, they are not going anywhere for a, for a really long time as well because they do their job quite right. And the, the technologies that are incorporated in those products are um, not really uh, changing or evolving anymore since you have for example for serial device servers you have the serial connectivity uh, or or the usb uh, connectivity so these are uh, these technologies are staying in there and these products as well so let's talk about first the core plugin lte modem concept um, this is a concept that we have started using starting uh, beginning of last year and this first came into our router portfolio uh, with the enterprise routers it's uh, spread uh, through the uh, industrial routers uh, segment and um, since last year and this year as i said we have launched these new two families anyway usb plus and connect it also with this um, technology which means that you can get cellular technology into your um, devices and make sure that you can do out-of-band management or out-of-band connectivity without being constrained to the existing network environment. What are the key benefits? First of all, it is interchangeable like a USB air card and obvi obviously these come as in any other uh, router that we have or any other LTE component we have in, in DG's uh, box offerings. Uh, they come with dual SIM capabilities for failover or even, um, yeah, for, um, for example, changing over if you have roaming uh, situations. What are the benefits uh, for the customer? First of all, you can mitigate at lower costs. You don't need to exchange the whole box, but you can just replace um, the uh, plug-in modem without replacing the primary uh, appliance. That gives you a, a large uh, or, or a much longer lifetime for the products uh, because you can keep the primary appliance and then add new LTE options as the LTE technology advances. As we know, the LTE te technology advances feel uh, much faster than um, the appliance itself. Um, at the moment, we have a global and non-global um, EMEA CAT4 with 3G and 2G fallback. We have a CAT6 high-speed LTE advanced with 3G fallback, and we also have a, an LTE advanced Pro CAT11 with 3G fallback. And in the future, we are planning on getting a CATM MBIoT um, plugin modem to fit your environment and for your application. So 
let's dive into the Anywhere USB Plus family. As you can see, I have grayed out some of the um, verticals and some key market segments from the first slide that I showed you. Um, this is to emphasize uh, what we think that our products uh, fits the best uh, in, in such verticals and, and key market segments. And this will basically continue showing up for the other products as well. So obviously not limited to, but we think that Anywhere USB Plus fits very well into industrial retail and enterprise uh, verticals. Um, they can be manufacturing automation, it can be uh, POS systems, it can be data center and branch offices, and we will be seeing in the next slides uh, some use case examples where we think uh, we can um, you know, hit the mark and really place our product good in. We have different SKUs for different uh, applications. If you are familiar with uh, the legacy Anywhere USB, we had two 5 and 14 port versions. Uh, in this new Anywhere USB Plus family, we have two 8 and 24 ports. The two port version is a small form factor for constrained environments. We have the 8 and 24 port versions for uh, desktop or, or rack um, applications. The, the eight port comes with rack ears already so that you can um, mount it in a, in a rack and 24 port is a, is a rack format already. So what are the foundational values? Um, the most important thing uh, if you have been working with the legacy products uh, especially is better device support. Um, we know that, um, that the Anywhere USB legacy product had uh, a limited uh, device support when it comes to the USB devices. With the Anywhere USB Plus, we have a much broader um, device support. In fact, theoretically, we support any USB device. Although it is almost impossible to test every uh, possible USB device on the planet, um, we go ahead and say that prima te technically, um, due to our implementation of our USB driver, um, it is uh, possible to um, support a much larger uh, USB device families. The second foundational value that is really important as well is the multi-host connectivity. Multi-host connectivity means that you can connect to different ports of the USB, uh, anywhere USB plus from different hosts at the same time. Um, also the enterprise level security and resiliency thanks to, to the DJ Accelerated Linux operating system. As I said, the the DAO operating system comes in with a great set of basic features when it comes to routing, firewall, uh, VPN tunneling, um, logging, and all sorts of um, features that is replicated throughout our portfolio that gives you great confidence to to use crossover um, um, products or change from anywhere USB to our routers or to our Connect IT without having to learn a new product from scratch. So, and that, and obviously, as I said, the basic features that are replicated through the port, throughout the portfolio will give you great confidence to uh, integrate those products into your network uh, without hesitation. So let's look at a little bit more in detail what the two 8 and 24 port offer. So for all those products we have on the front end USB 3.1 generation one, obviously the number of ports change from two to 24, uh, depending on the model. Um, we have no mounting options for the two port. As I said, this is for more or less for constrained environments for um, desktop or, or confined spaces um, without any mounting options uh, for 8 and 24 ports uh, you can mount it in a rack. Um, on the USB side we also have USB power. On the two port version we supply 1.8 amps per port whereas we supply 1 amp on the 8 on the 24 port versions per port. Um, when it comes to the Ethernet, all these devices have um, at least gigabit Ethernet. As you can see, on the 8 and 24 port, we have 10 gigabit Ethernet. And on the 24, even we have two of those for uh, redundancy. We also have SFP plus support on the 8 and 24 ports. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, even if we have two Ethernet ports and two SFP plus ports, a given Ethernet and SFP plus ports uh, cannot work at the same time, which means you have at the end two um, connections per se. So either an Ethernet port or an SFP plus port can work in a given row. So um, you have 
uh, at the end to uh, resilient connections. And we've already talked about the core module support. Uh, we have the support on the 8 and 24 ports. Um, so basically you have a, an opening in the back of the device. Um, you can just slide in one of those modems um, um, to your liking uh, or depending on your application, and then you're basically good to go. Thanks to the operating system already um, supporting all the all the modem types. So the next couple of slides, we will be talking about some use cases where we think that the Anywhere USB Plus really points. So uh, first uh, is kiosk or service point application. Um, Anywhere USB Plus 2 port being a really small form factor device, it fits really well into constrained spaces. They might be restaurant, kitchen, security check-in station, in-store lookup kiosks or locking uh, loading docks. And um, in those areas, in those environments, you have things like um, keyboard, printer, monitor, they, they're all USB based or um, um, anything that serves um, the customer um, where you don't want to have the, the processing unit there because of the confined space. So um, anywhere USB Plus can facilitate that connection from those um, end units to the host PC or the host application uh, seamlessly so that you can um, basically lift that, that um, constraint of physical proximity of the main um, PC or the host application to the devices themselves. Next up is logistics, tracking and retail. Um, we have nowadays for anything those handheld units. So we have uh, in warehouses, stock rooms or retail stores, you have those uh, handheld units that you scan um, um, you know, products and you basically log what you've been getting in and out of your warehouse or your stock room or your retail store. And uh, those kind of devices have, for example, catalogs or um, they log the, um, the, the transactions throughout the day. So um, it's a great way to have an Anyway USB Plus to manage the inventory data captures or transactions, up update firmware of such devices, uh, update catalogs or available stock, and charge those equipment at the same time um, in a in a and mass features. Uh, so you can have up to 24 such devices given a an anywhere USB plus, and you can update them and recharge them um, at the same time. Similarly, in a in a smart device uh, environment or an application um, where you test, validate, configure, or deploy a smart technology you can use an Anywhere USB Plus device in order to, um, to do these um, actions and mass, so, such as you can do factory automation and quality check. You can do initial provisioning and deployment. Um, for example, if you need a, a, for example, a branded uh, operating system or applications already installed um, on tablets or, or other handheld units, you can already do this. Um, in parallel on a great number of devices. Um, or of course, um, maintenance or, or um, um, field service of end customer devices. So next use case will be the license dongle management. This is pretty much the, the primary or, or the, the, the initial use case of Anywhere uh, products, um, also uh, including the, the legacy Anywhere USB product. Um, in a lot of sectors, in a lot of industries, you have uh, software that that they need um, so licensed dongles, and those licensed dongles are generally quite expensive. So instead of passing it around from one employee to the other, risking someone putting it in their uh, you know pocket and going home uh, and forgetting uh, that they took it, um, you can use an anywhere USB Plus device in a server rack behind closed doors and you can connect all those USB dongles and give access to the people who need it um, in, a, in, a, in a secure manner. Um, those industries can be engineering uh, or graphical design. Um, it might be also th uh, such dongles um, that are used for authentication or for encryption that might be in financial or in retail business, or they might be any other um, thing such as industrial automation. Uh, at the end of the day, um, the application itself is quite irrelevant. Uh, anywhere USB 
as a product just gives you connectivity over the network uh, of your USB devices, and those USB devices act like they are connected locally to your application or to your host PC. That is the key message to take for this product. So, next up, we will be talking about the console servers. Um, you see that we've grayed out again um, some uh, verticals. Uh, obviously, they are, again, not limited to those. We have retail and enterprise. The obvious choices are uh, data centers and branch offices, but in, also in retail environments, uh, remote equipment um, or, or, or POS systems. So, but first we need to talk about what's a console management for those uh, who might not know. A, a console is an operator interface to a device. The console is the most reliable mechanism for managing servers network equipment or others. You can see on the right hand of the slide, um, it is a, a quite the, a, the, the, let's say, list of products that we can, or a list of equipment that you can have in your network that can be managed by a console server product. Um, and those console ports for such equipment uh, uses mostly serial or sometimes network socket connections. And those systems may have more than just one console method. So controlling the console access is a key policy uh, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a key component for your system management, for your security, for the re regulatory and, and ISO compliance. So um, DG supplies the hardware-based solution for managing serial and network consoles with centralized access and central management with DG Remote Manager. So um, some key benefits. Um, as we said, the LTE plugin modem concept. So in certain cases, you might just not be able to go through the existing uh, network infrastructure or there might be um, no such infrastructure for you to use. So uh, LTE would be a great choice and you, it would make you independent of the existing um, environment and um, it will give you great flexibility. Um, we have straight through cabling to connect to Sun or, or Cisco um, serial consoles. Um, it is customi customizable in terms of logging, alerting and monitoring capabilities. And um, as I said, um, it is, um, is an enterprise management with the DG Remote Manager. And we can access to all equipment simultaneously uh, from a single product. Let's talk about the the flavors of uh, Connect IT and uh, the features that come with it. We have three form factors and four uh, models. We have the Connect IT Mini, we have the Connect IT 4, and the Connect IT 16 and 48. Um, the Connect IT Mini comes with a single serial console port uh, in form of the RJ45 connector, um, and that's, that's correct also for the other models as well. It comes with a 10 to 100 Ethernet uh, port, um, and it uses CAT-M for cellular connectivity. So you can either use the Ethernet option or the CAT-M in order to do out-of-band management uh, to your device connected to the serial console. It powers through the 5 volt USB uh, mini uh, port, and it can basically be uh, powered uh, by using any, any USB charger as well. Then next up, we have Connect IT4. As the name suggests, we have four serial ports. We have two uh, Ethernet um, ports. It can be configured either as a LAN port or a WAN port that comes with the operating system that is quite flexible. So each port can be defined as however your, your application needs. It comes with the core module support, which means that it has an opening for you to plug in a, a plugin modem. Um, you can buy it without, you can buy later on the modem, or you can buy it already bundled uh, from Digi. It comes with an 18 volt external power supply. On the Connect IT 16 and 48, they are rack devices, as you can see top right. Um, it has the same um, form factor. The 16 has one of those, um, let's say, units, and you see on the top right uh, three such units for the Connect IT 48. Um, you have dual gigabit Ethernet plus uh, dual SFP plus. As I said, those also can work at a given time, either the Ethernet or the SFP plus, giving you at the end four connectivity options, but two of them um, being available at a given time. 
it comes with the core module um, availability or, or support. And one thing to keep in mind for this product is it has dual internal power supply and it's also field replaceable. Um, these products come also with two different power supply kits, one for port side uh, intake and one for port side exhaust. Um, for people who work in uh, large uh, data centers, you have cold and hot, hot aisles in order to um, optimize the, the cooling systems. So you can decide depending on your um, on the location where you will um, um, mount these devices if you want to use a port side intake or exhaust in order to fit your um, IT uh, cooling infrastructure. So. Next up, we will be talking about some use cases as we have done with Anywhere USB Plus. First of all, we will be talking about the Connect IT Mini. Uh, for such products, we have a couple of requirements. For example, um, just having uh, one or a few critical assets to manage at a given remote, remote site. Um, you have um, one rack per site, which means that you have just this one uh, or, or two devices that uh, you want to manage and obviously um, cellular is assumed. So um, that, that might be an MPLS access router, it might be a phone box, it might be a security system or it might be a managed computer. And in many cases, this is a customer premises equipment. So what happens with the customer premises equipment is that you um, might not get easily the network access to connect to to this device. So having the cellular option gives you great flexibility to say, okay, you know what, if I cannot go through your network uh, in an easy way, um, I can just use the, the LTEM option in order to connect to my device. That will reduce the, the truck rolls or the necessity to go in through uh, to the customer premises and you can basically do anything you need uh, remotely. Next up is uh, Connect IT4. In, uh, for the Connect IT4, we see uh, requirements um, such as uh, places like branch stores or office management, where you have um, more than one um, device that you would like to connect to. Um, you might have one or more rooms with racks in them, so you might need uh, several of those products um, depending on the application or the environment. And in many cases, cellular is common, but not always required. So you might get away with uh, a WAN connection throughout the network that is existing, um, but it is important to know that you have this option just in case you want to be independent of the network or you would like to um, have a failover um, alternative to the, to the wired uh, WAN interface. So last but not least, um, obviously the, um, the application for Connect IT 16 and 48 them being uh, rack devices. It is for large data centers with uh, multiple equipments in a rack. Um, in this case, up to 48 devices with a single uh, Connect IT device. In large data centers, cellular is quite uncommon because of the reception uh, within those um, data centers, but um, it is still possible um, to, for example, have uh, antennas placed outside and, and an antenna, a good uh, antenna cable is used in order to connect, um, or it might just uh, simply have um, a good reception nonetheless. So um, it is important to know, uh, as I said in the previous slides, when, when we talked about the different flavors, that this product comes with dual network and dual power for high availability so that you can make sure that this product is going to run no matter what. And um, typical or obvious application for this product is um, um, enterprise IT systems. So next up, we will be talking about the terminal servers or serial device servers, however you would like to call it. Um, these products have been there for a really, really long time. At the end of the day, what they do is connect your serial devices, your legacy devices, through the network to your application. There are a couple of scenarios how um, that might be facilitated, but let's just look at first uh, to the verticals and to the key market segments that we think that this product fits uh, very well. Um, obviously, the obvious choice is industrial and retail. And one thing to keep in mind though, um, all, all the way to the right, you see medical, 
it is a product that is almost unique uh, in what they do because it needs a, a certain certification in medical use so that you can put any hardware into the patient environment. And it is really important that you know that we also have an offering uh, for this use case. So let us look at the foundational values. Um, these products being put into different environments, it is really important to be able to cover also different use cases. So uh, RS-232 doesn't really always cover everything. So we have 422485 options that they might be, depending on the model, either software or manual switch selectable. And uh, we have the real port COM port redirector. So at this point, I would like to um, talk a little bit about what COM real port does. So what real port does is the following. If you have an application that requires a COM port to talk to, and if you have a device remotely, and you want to connect that device as if it is locally connected to a, an existing COM port, the real port is a driver that installs a virtual COM port in order to facilitate this. So what happens is you create, using the real port driver, you create a virtual COM port on your PC that's, that is already configured to connect to a, a certain device in your network. It might be a single, it might be a multi-port or, or an enterprise multi-port device. And your application talks to that COM port as if it is physically available and real port driver basically packetizes it and sends it over, to the, over uh, to the device over the network and device unpacks it and uh, forwards it to the serial port. So um, another use case is if your application is already, let's say, a bit more modern and looking for a TCP or UDP uh, connection to talk to, and your legacy device still only talks to 32 or 485. In that case, you can use just socket communication so that the device basically packetizes what it receives from the serial port and sends it over to a UDP or TCP port. It is really important to also know that in, in, in an industrial environment, there are different protocols um, um, that might be existing in your environment, such as Modbus or others, and industrial automation also comes with um, these products, for example, Modbus RTU to TCP conversion in order to make sure that you can connect basically serial devices that run uh, with Modbus to, to your application that's expecting um, also Modbus co uh, co communication on the TCP level. So let us highlight a couple of things about the different uh, variants that we have or different um, subfamilies that we have within the the serial device servers. First of all, is the single ports. Um, the highlights for this for these devices uh, are them being small and low cost, and given basic ser serial server functionality. What I've uh, mentioned um, in the top, the foundational values already apply to this product. We have some um, parts that are let's say specialized for certain applications or cer certain environments. Um, they come uh, as ruggedized or DIN rail mountable uh, and also coming with uh, protocol conversion. You see on the right hand side, DG1 uh, IA, uh, and we also have another one called DG1 IAP that does protocol conversion. If you have different protocols running in the same environment, you can basically make them talk. So it is basically uh, being the, um, yeah, the, the translator. So on the multi-port uh, devices, we have the multiple electrical interface, which means that by software, you can select if, it, if, if a certain port uh, should run on 232 or 485. Uh, we have PoE uh, versions available, so you can um, just plug in a um, an Ethernet cable and you can already start going and you don't need power uh, anywhere else depending on your environment if it doesn't allow. You have hardened and conformal coding for, uh, for example, um, yeah, hazardous locations if a device needs to uh, conform to such um, specifications. We even have an internal modem version available if that's still needed. On the enterprise multiports, one thing that I want to highlight is the Python programming. It is really important to know that with those devices and not limited to, we 
We also have on the single port devices a couple of such products that come with Python functionality. But on the multi-port devices, it is really important to know that you can use those devices as a one-box solution in an application where you have the serial connectivity, but you need more than just connecting serial devices to your network or to your application, but if you need to do some edge processing or edge computing. So you can run a Python application to read then or understand the information um, that is coming from the serial ports. You can log them, you can filter them, you can act on them depending on uh, what kind of data you're getting, and you can basically uh, already pre-filter or pre-process the data before sending um, to, the, to the application. And um, for those enterprise multiports, like in the Connect IT, you have redundancy uh, with dual internet and dual power for critical applications. So next up is the medical um, device servers. Um, these specialty products, there are two of them you see on the left and right hand side, Connect WS and Connect ES. Um, they are two different flavors and come with uh, different features, but at the end of the day, what they do is the same thing. They connect serial devices to your application, to your um, enterprise, but they have the specialty uh, safety testing EN6601-1 uh, to be used in uh, patient environments. On the left hand side, the Connect WS, it comes with Wi-Fi. If you don't want to use cabling, so you can connect to the, to the existing network over Wi-Fi. It comes with PoE support. Uh, conversely, if you would like to get rid of the power supply and just um, power the device over a Ethernet cable, you can use it. It comes with one, four, and eight port versions, and it only does TCP socket communication. So what I've talked to you before, the real port doesn't uh, exist on this uh, product. Um, it comes with direct BESA mounting though. Um, it is a really sleek um, product with plastic enclosure that is also um, sometimes needed um, or, or specced or required uh, that it's not um, metal. On the right hand side though, we have um, the metal enclosure, Connect ES, uh, with a wipe down for, for example, writing on the surface for labeling the attached devices so that you know which device is um, connected to which uh, port. You have galvanic isolation on all ports. So we have um, the Ethernet ports as well as the, the serial ports. Um, the, the second point, you see the integrated Ethernet switch option. If you have um, a single port on your wall, um, um, and you would like to still connect other um, devices to your network, you can use the integrated um, Ethernet option, switch option, in order to add more devices to your network without needing uh, multiple uh, sockets on the wall. And it comes with real port and TCP socket support, which means that you can either talk to a COM port on, on, on the application side, or you can uh, expect TCP communication. So next up, um, I will be showing three, four slides about the use cases on the serial device servers. And with that, I will be also concluding my presentation. First and uh, foremost, we have the factory automation in industrial uh, environment. Um, of course, we still have a lot of devices that are uh, legacy PLCs uh, and displays. They, they have been put there 20 years ago and they are still running. And exchanging such a device in a, in a running environment uh, is first of all, uh, due, due to the nature of such devices is quite costly. Second of all, it requires a, a, lot, a lot of downtime if you would like to exchange cabling as well. So what you can do is you can modernize such environments by using our products by just putting it in between, just connecting without changing any cabling or any anything else, just plug in the serial port and then you can basically communicate all this to your network. So um, what are the key benefits for such um, application uh, is of course integrating equipment across multiple protocols. As I said, we have certain models that come with protocol conversion so that you can um, basically um, have a, a, a non-harmonized environment 
and you can basically connect everything um, together and you can you can connect things like uh, ASCII devices, display scanners with PLCs. So um, the key products there is the DG1 IA, IAP, that they do the industrial automation and protocol conversion. You have the DG1 SPIA that also does the um, industrial automation, the IA for industrial automation. And uh, for some cases, we have the port server and the connect port TS and LTS uh, if you need multiple devices connected at a given site. Similarly, in a manufacturing and process control, the same thing uh, with the addition of for example, the, the um, mounting location being a, a DIN rail cabinet. Um, so we have such devices as well, as I said, already integrated DIN rail mounting. Um, also, those products come with a certain um, specs or, 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 or features uh, to be used in hazardous environments. And they, they are up to four ports. And the key products for these kind of scenarios um, are the IA and IAP, as I said, the, the SPIA and TS and connect port LTS. Also logistics automation uh, is a great example of these products uh, being really um, beneficial. Uh, we have in the front of the house, if you will, in, 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 an, in a warehouse, you have label printer, a handheld scanner or a document printer that you would like to connect and you would like to send all this data, what's been done or a scanner, overhead scanner, um, and all this da data should be sent to a central order and inventory management system that you can do with one of our products. So, um, yeah, key benefits is uh, pretty much what uh, is replicated throughout our portfolio, the multiple electrical interface or, or switch selectable um, multiple protocols, the RS-232, 422, and 485. And in some of the models have the PoE and even uh, powered serial devices. And RealPort is a great example of, um, you know, these uh, use cases where you connect such uh, end devices to a, an application which do, by historical reasons still expecting a COM port to talk to. So uh, for these where you have multiple um, devices the key products um, are the port server TS products either come in uh, MEI or or NP. So last but not least uh, SCADA systems as well is a um, an example that's used um, commonly with our products. So it can be substation monitoring, um, it can be a uh, an AC monitoring or, or pipeline SCADA monitoring and centralizing those uh, systems. And in, in such cases, you have multiple target devices. So uh, our key products are the connect port TS and LTS. They come in eight, 16 to 32 ports. Um, I think with that, I have covered everything that I would like to cover, and I would like to hand it back to Ron for question and answer. Thank you, Engin. That was a really great presentation, a very good overview of all of our IMG products. Um, I am going to now just go through some of the questions we've had. As I mentioned previously, um, please uh, feel free to either uh, email us using the digi.webinars uh, at digi.com email address or use the questions facility that we have uh, on, um, on the GoToWebinar uh, uh, menu that you'll see on the right-hand side of your screen. So we've had some questions Right, so first one is, when will Linux drivers to anywhere USB 2 plus be available, be supported? Yeah, yeah. Um, it is really independent of the product model itself. So it is, if when it is available, it's gonna be available for the whole family, uh, independent of two, eight or 24 ports. Um, we have been working on the Linux drivers and it is a really good question and something that we've been also um, anxiously waiting. Um, unfortunately, 
um, due to the known reasons and um, the situation, um, some of the priorities um, had to be changed. So uh, we are still working on it. It's on our roadmap. And currently, we are expecting the Linux drivers for the Anywhere USB Plus to be released in the early 2021. Okay, thank you, Engin. Um, right, other questions here. What is multi-host connection? Yeah, great question. Uh, multi-host, um, I try to explain, maybe I, I need to give a, a, a bit more detailed answer. Uh, multi-host basically gives the possibility to connect different hosts to different ports of the Anywhere USB Plus at a given time. Um, so. In detail, if you have, for example, a two-port device, you can connect a, let's say, a licensed dongle to the port one and a USB webcam to the port two. And these can be accessed from two different hosts at the same time, uh, where you have a, an employee working on a, on a graphics design software. And you can stream your webcam through an application um, on another PC. One thing to keep in mind, that we are not talking about sharing a USB device, which means that you cannot um, communicate to the same USB device from different hosts at the same time. Um, that is as quite uh, often, uh, that is not the case. So it is a one-to-one -one connection, one USB device to a one host. But since we have multiple ports, those multiple ports can be connected at the same time from the different hosts. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Um, another question here. Can I use DRM, so that's Digi Remote Manager, with the infrastructure management products? Great question. Um, most important to know is all of our new products, such as Anywhere USB Plus and Connect IT, which also come with the Digi Accelerated Linux, they are fully Digi Remote Manager compatible. So you can go on and do configuration, management, monitoring of those devices. Uh, for the Connect IT devices, you can talk to the serial ports, so you can do the, the port, the console access right from the Digi Remote Manager. So it is, it is a great tool to roll out your devices to make sure that um, you can keep compliancy in terms of uh, file system, firmware level, or uh, configuration, but at the same time, use facilities, as I said, like the console access straight from the remote manager to talk to your devices um, that are connected to the serial ports. Um, when it comes to the legacy devices, I would ask you to get in touch with us if you want to use, for example, serial device servers. Um, let us talk because it's more of a, um, you know, on, on product basis. So I cannot give you a, a, a general um, answer when it comes to the serial device servers. So let's um, let's keep in touch if you have questions specifically for the serial device servers. Thank you. Um, last question here is anywhere USB plus backward compatible with anywhere USB? Well, um, there are two answers to this question. One is yes and one, one is no. Um, on the USB side, having USB 3.1, uh, we are definitely backwards compatible as long as the USB devices are concerned. So if you have a USB 2.0 device, you will still be able to talk to this device. It is not limited to 3.1, um, um, let's say, um, version. But on the back end, so between the host PC and the Anywhere USB, we have a driver. And this driver is different between the Anywhere USB legacy product and the Anywhere USB Plus. And the reason for that is the greater device support that we are offering now with our new Anywhere USB Plus. Um, in order to add more devices, such as isochronous devices like video devices or audio devices, that driver needed to be um, completely rewritten. So that's the reason that we have a, a new Anywhere USB manager um, that you need to use for the Anywhere USB Plus devices, and you still have the Anywhere USB manager for the for the legacy device. So if you have a, a heterogeneous, uh, uh, um, let's say, environment, so if you have already the, the legacy product, and if you, if you want to buy the new product, uh, you will have to 
basically install the, the two, two managers concurrently on your host PC. Thank you, Engin. Uh, and just to, to add to that uh, question, because um, I do get periodically asked, um, for sure, uh, officially, we have taken the Anywhere USB product, the old version, out of the uh, current Digi product portfolio. Um, we have you know, migrated most people over to the new Anywhere USB Plus products, uh, and it is fair to say that the Anywhere USB Plus um, you know, is a quantum leap in performance, uh, both on the front end, USB 3.1 versus 2, and, and on the backhaul, you know, fast Ethernet versus uh, 1 gig or even 10 gig Ethernet on the newer products. Um, that said, while we have officially removed the old products from our, our price books and our website and our portfolio, we are still able to make in limited quantities the old product. Um, so if, if you or you have customers who do need to get hold of the older version for whatever reason, um, you know, please talk to us or please talk to your usual Digi distributor and, uh, and we'll be happy to look into that requirement for you. So. Um, Thank you, Engin. That was a really great presentation. And I'd like to thank everybody who's attended for taking the time. Um, I hope you've enjoyed not only this webinar, but also the other webinars that we've run this week. Uh, as I mentioned at the top of the hour, um, all of these presentations, all of these webinars um, uh, as videos will be uh, posted on the digi.com website. Um, so you'll be able to go in and, and review them again or, or send the links to colleagues if you think they might find it of value. And, uh, and as always, please feel free to contact us directly or through our distribution partners and resellers uh, if you require more information on, on Digi products. Thanks very much. Have a good day. And as it's Friday, have a good weekend. <laughs>